Hello, welcome to another edition of Ask Kim. This is the place where you can ask a marriage therapist any questions you have, and I will do my best to answer in a way that will be helpful to you and to anyone else listening. So today I want to answer a question from a gentleman who asked actually five really long questions. <laughs> And I can't cover this as a one question session. I'm going to answer the first one and then I'm going to put you back in the queue and ask the other questions as you come back around. And so your question today is how can you identify truly qualified counselors to speak into marriage? You had mentioned that many seek help from counselors are sometimes hard to find, especially qualified ones. Additionally, divorce seems a popular cop-out and courts thrive in accommodating that route and many counselors seem to be equally as accommodating. This is a hot topic for me. The question is, how do you find a qualified counselor for anything? I think, really, it's tough to do. Just like any profession, we have people who are very skilled at their craft, and we have people who are not so skilled. So marriage therapists, I would do some questioning as far as their training and the amount of cases that they currently see that are actually couples. So for instance, whether you're an LPC, licensed professional counselor, or an LMFT, a licensed marriage and family therapist, and there's also an LCSW, which is a licensed clinical social worker. And then there's also a psychologist. So those are the four different types of degrees or credentials that can see clients in a counseling or therapy situation. And licensed LMFT may sound like, oh, this is a professional marriage and family therapist, so this is the one we need to see. That's not necessarily true. Most of these people, the training has been for individual, for mental illness for learning all of the personality disorders and the dysfunctions and learning how to diagnose and treat those. Relationship counseling is a far different animal in my opinion. It is how much training that they have done on their own afterwards. In school we're not going to get that. We're just not. And we're all trained, like I said, as individuals. And so we hang a shingle out, we start seeing clients, we put two people on a couch and we call ourselves couples expert or therapist. To me, what makes an expert is how much training have you done after that is focused specifically on couples, who you've worked with, and how much of your caseload is couples. So if your caseload is 20 clients a week and two of them are couples, that's not somebody that I would work with. At the marriage place, couples are like 95% of our caseload. So a counselor that works for me is going to see 20 clients a week and 18 or 19 of them are going to be relationship work. The other thing that we do, I lead training every week with my staff, both coaches and counselors, for an hour and a half every week. Now we're only supposed to or have to get 24 hours of continuing education in a two-year period of time. And that can be on anything. That can be on parenting issues. That can be on stress. It can be on trauma. It can be on ethics. And you don't have to do any couples therapy training. And so an hour and a half every week, we do couples issues and case consults. That is how I would deal with the actual qualifications of one. As far as finding a therapist who is what I call pro-marriage, that's a lot of questionings because there are a lot of therapists out there who divorce is a really quick option for them. And I have had clients come to me who have seen other therapists and the therapist has made recommendations to get a divorce, which that's a problem. And so I would ask what their stance is on marriage and the commitment of marriage and staying together. Do they call themselves pro-marriage? And basically what that means is that the marriage is your client and you work and fight for the marriage for as long as two people want to work and fight for it. And at the marriage place, as long as one person wants to fight, we fight. In fact, the only time we ever will recommend a divorce is with the three A's, affairs, abuse, and addiction untreated. There is a time and a place where divorce is appropriate. But I got to tell you, most people that divorce today, it's sad. It, it's so unnecessary. And families are being ripped apart 
when it's just a difficult situation that didn't have the right help or the right tools or confrontation. Sometimes a therapist has to tell you some things that are going to really be upsetting that you need to hear. And finding the right therapist is important, but being the right client is also important. And that's being somebody who's open to feedback, who's willing to look at your stuff and not completely focus on your spouse. So that's a lot to put in there, but that's what I think about that. As far as counselors, I do want to go back on this one more time. The uh, seeking help when counselors are hard to find. There are some really remote uh, places or small towns where there's not a lot of options. Therapists now are doing a lot of sessions remotely because of COVID. That's one good thing that's come out of it. And I really hope that continues for this situation alone. We have always seen clients remote. We were doing this way before COVID. Since we opened, we've been doing this. Some therapists, most actually, can't operate across state lines, but you can find a bigger city in your state that will have good therapists to work with. Or like we do at the Marriage Place, we have coaches and my coaches are trained as my therapists because they're involved in the Uh, hour and a half weekly training, and they're good at what they do. We have clients all over the world in different countries and time zones. The help is out there. You just have to get diligent about finding it and don't give up. So that's what I want to say. I hope that was helpful. If you like it, please hit subscribe, and that will allow us to stay here and be with you and do this Ask Kim series that I'm pretty excited about. So guys, remember, raise your love bar. We've talked about that before. The love bar is expecting more out of your relationship, and it starts with you. Change for the two of you starts with you. Until next time, I will see you soon.